Welcome back. I want to just go over a couple things before we um, um, before we go on. So you just remember, um, just remember a few things. These are the things you have to, you have to keep in mind. Remember Sykes Pico. This is England and France making a treaty and dividing up the land. Why are they doing this? They're divide up the land. Remember Sykes Pico. They're promising. Behind their back, they're, they're negotiating, but to the Arab face, they're promising them a united Arab kingdom which would give them rule of greater Syria. Really important to remember, rule of greater Syria, a united Arab kingdom. The West lied to protect the trade routes. Got it? All they want to do is divide these people up, keep them warring with each other because then they're warring with each other and they're not worried about the United Kingdom or France or anybody else. So the West lied for trade and the Jews and the Palestinians are nothing but pawns. And I will show this to you um, in today's terms, something that the president should be telling every American. All right. So now, the Palestinian Arabs, they decline the opportunity for a country of their own. Israel says, yes, we'll split it with you. In fact, Israel goes out and they actually go out in vans and they say to the Palestinians, stay here, we'll protect you, stay here, don't leave. But the Arab world has convinced them, don't worry, don't worry, we're going to get you your own homeland. They were lying. The Arab nations surrounding Israel in the Arab League. Remember, again, goal unification. They said they had to act because, and I quote, the only solution of the Palestinian problem is the establishment of a unitary Palestinian state. Really important. Security in Palestine is a sacred trust in the hands of the Arab states. So there's no middle ground here. War was imminent. Watch. 1947. Palestinians had just rejected the UN plan to give them a nation. Surrounding Arab nations prepared to attack Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan. By all reasonable estimates, Israel should have been utterly destroyed. Five Arab armies with huge advantages in armor, artillery, and air force. Despite suffering huge casualties early on, Somehow, this tiny new nation, the Jewish people, managed to stave off the assault and then go on the offensive. Not only did they push Arab forces out of Israel, they managed to capture land way beyond their boundaries. A miracle? I think so. But there was something else. Before the war broke out, Jordan made a secret deal with Israel. They wanted the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Jews weren't promised this land in the UN partition, so they agreed to let Jordan take it. Jordan actually attacked Palestinian Arabs to get that land. Where is that in the history books? Egypt wanted southern Palestine. Iraq wanted the entire Fertile Crescent under their control. And Syria and Lebanon wanted northern Palestine. Where was the Palestinian state? You see, it wasn't about freedom for the Palestinian Arabs or the Jewish occupation. This war is what wars are always about. Land, power, control. Israelis today remember it as the War of Independence. Palestinians call it Nakba, catastrophe. But when you actually know the history, the only catastrophe is when Palestinians rejected their chance at a nation of their own, and then were sold out by their own Arab neighbors. Okay, I, wanna, I want you to add now to your memory to all these things. Who was it that did this? If you look at that map again, it was Jordan, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt. Remember that. This all ties together here at the end in an amazing way. This is a first printing of Israel's Declaration of Independence. It is one of only 38 prints made. Each of the 37 signers received one. This is an actual, um, not copy of one, this is an actual uh, printing of it, one of the 38. This was an amazing moment. Now, I want to make it really, really clear. The Jewish state is never perfect. It wasn't perfect, made a lot of mistakes uh, throughout history. Um, 
you know, neither has, uh, neither has England, neither have the Arabs, neither have the Palestinians. We've all made mistakes. But remember, in 1948, Jews were only just a couple of years removed from the Holocaust. They'd heard the rhetoric before. They weren't about to take any chances trusting anyone. They knew what it was like to be used as a pawn or a scapegoat. But here's the thing to remember. It wasn't just the Jews that knew that. The Palestinians, the Arab refugees who fled during this war, these two people have more in common than everybody else, than England and France and America and the Arab world. These two groups are actually almost identical in their stories. The Arab states all but forced their hand. They didn't give them a place to stay after they fled. There's plenty of room in Transjordan. They didn't get any of that. So what gets? What, what, what happens here? Pawns. In a game that has nothing to do with the Jews or the Palestinians.